Hi, I'm Jim, W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room here on Wolf Mountain. It's 45 degrees, it's 7.30 in the morning, it looks like it's going to be a, uh, a beautiful day. I've received many emails about antenna tuners, and in particular manual antenna tuners, and how do you make them work? And they're really pretty simple, um, but if you hook it up wrong or if you're not looking for the right thing it can be frustrating so I'm going to demonstrate that in just a minute using the um, uh, Drake antenna tuner that I have which is ancient but the basic design is the same as uh, that one and others that are manual the antenna tuners uh, that are like that uh, with a couple of knobs in advance which are a, typically a T layout or a T tuner. T because the layout is like the letter T. So there's two capacitors. Uh, the output of one connects to the input of the other. At that junction is a coil that goes down to ground. The band switch that's on the front of that then picks taps on that coil. And they've configured the band switch so that we're likely going to be in the right spot. If we pick 40 meters, it's going to tune on 40 meters. Uh, that antenna tuner can match a wide range of impedances. It's really pretty forgiving. has a built-in SWR meter, which is really, really handy. What we want to look at is reflected power. Keeping in mind <clears throat> that the transceiver may throttle back output and the SWR or the reflected power may look good for an instant, but in fact it's a transceiver shutting off. So you think you've achieved a one-to-one -one SWR, but in fact the, t the transceiver's totally shut off and it's putting out no power. So we're going to do um, a simple process, which is start with relatively low power. I'm going to start with probably 10 watts. I'm going to adjust the in input capacitor first and then the output capacitor. And I'm going to turn the knob until I see a dip in the SWR. And I'm going to turn the other knob knob until I see uh, a further dip and back and forth and back and forth and pretty soon the SWR meter will indicate certainly less than 2 to 1 and probably less than 1 to 1 which is we're good to go. And we can repeat that process on any band. Uh, whether or not the antenna works well on those bands is a whole different story because we will have uh, feed line losses and because of the mismatch at the antenna and other stuff going on. All that said, if you need to put an antenna, um, a G5 RV, or a random wire on a band with a manual tuner, it's really pretty simple. So let's give that a try. Let's see what happens. Uh, I'm going to move the camera, try to set it up in a place where I can uh, zoom in on the knobs on the, uh, the Drake. Um, I'm going to shut off my SWR watt meter above that because it will alarm to tell me the SWR is high during all this process and even after I achieve uh, a low SWR it's still going to alarm because that SWR meter, watt meter, follows the antenna tuner so it's seeing the high SWR. Typical layout would be um, a transceiver into a manual antenna tuner that has an SWR meter built into it. If it doesn't have one or if your transceiver doesn't have an SWR meter then you can put an external one in the line between the transceiver and the antenna tuner. So it would be transceiver, SWR meter, antenna tuner, feed line, and antenna. Let's give it a try. See what happens. And um, It's 40 meters. I'm going to be doing low power I'm also um, in the uh, the area of the broadcast band, so I'm hopefully not going to interfere with anybody when we do this quick test. Okay, here we go. I'm going to set the band switch to uh, 40 meters. And this is on uh, SWR, the meter switch. Um, going to uh, set the transceiver to uh, 10 watts. It was on 100, so I've got to dial it down. Okay, there's 10 watts. I'm going to key it into the um, antenna tuner and the SWR. Let's do this. All right, 
So, let's see. Slight dip there. There we go. Well, there's a big dip. All right, let's see how that is. Um, I'm going to run the power up to 20 watts. Look at the watt meter, it says 20 watts. Uh, reflected power darn near zero. Uh, let's increase the power to uh, 50 watts on the transceiver. Eat again, and it's still good. So it was just that fast. Um, since that went so fast, let's try 80 meters just for the fun of it and see what happens. So gonna, my camera shut off, so we're going to do this again. Um, gone to um, to 80 meters put the band switch on 80 uh, put the transceiver to 10 watts transmit uh, that's not doing anything let's see there we go Transceiver says 1.2 to 1. Um, that's showing 10 watts forward. Let's up the power to 20 watts. Do the same thing. Oh, put it in SWR. And we're good. So that's how fast it tunes. Um, it's a matter of rocking these two knobs, the in and the out, until you uh, start to get a low SWR and then continue to, to maneuver them until um, you get it as low as you, as you want. Really anything less than 2 to 1 is good. Um, let's go to 100 watts out. Alright, that's um, indicating high SWR because I haven't calibrated it. Let's do that real quick. Alright, that's calibrated and SWR is about uh, 1.4 to 1. Alright, we're done. It's just that simple. Oh, I hope you found that interesting. Uh, if you have a comment about this, please uh, post it below in the comment section. If you have a question, put it. Uh, please put it there too. Um, either I'll try to answer, or sometimes uh, others will answer with actually <laughs> great answers, better than some things I've been thinking about. If you um, would like to see more of these, uh, please subscribe. We're trying to build the uh, the base of, of uh, subscribers to uh, a nice level for this year. All right, for now, I'm Jim W6LG for Ham Radio Basics 73. See you around.